This is the fourth video on impulse and momentum and we're going to work through some more basic exam style questions. In the first question we're told a sphere of mass 4 kilograms which has a velocity of 3i at minus 2j meters per second collides with a sphere b of the same radius but mass 7 kilograms which is moving with velocity 3i plus 2j meters per second. As a result of a collision a is brought to rest. In part a we need to find the velocity of b after the impact and in part b we need to state an assumption we've made in our mathematical modelling. Straight away the assumption we're going to make is that these are particles. So let's go ahead and model these up. So we'll have a before and an after shot and we've seen this in previous videos. So if I put a just here I can put a there and I can put a b just here. So this is my before shot and then we can have an after shot. This will be a and this will be b. So writing these on we can put before and after. So stating this one, this here, before, and then we have after. I'm going to put the mass of each particle on. The mass of A is going to be 4 kilograms. So we've got 4 kilograms, we've got 4 kilograms. This is afterwards. And we've got B, which is going to be 7. So we've got 7 kilograms. And we've got 7 kilograms. Let's now look at the velocity. There are lots of different ways that you can write this. I prefer to work with column vectors. So using the column notation, we've got 3i minus 2j, or 3 minus 2. If we look at b, we've got 3 positive 2, so 3i plus 2j. We're told afterwards that a is brought to rest. So if we put that on, that's going to be 0, 0. And now we want the velocity of b, which we could write as pi plus qj meters per second. Again, you can do that any way you like. We're going to state now, using the conservation of linear momentum, the total momentum prior to the collision will be equal to total momentum after the collision. And we've seen that in the last couple of videos. Momentum is given as the mass times by the velocity. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got a mass of 4 multiplied by a velocity of 3 minus 2. Then we've got now 7, which is the mass, multiplied by the velocity, which is 3, 2. And that must be equal now to the mass, which is going to be 4, multiplied by the velocity, which is 0, 0 plus now the mass, multiplied by the velocity, which I've defined to be P and Q. So let's go ahead and look at this. We're going to have now 12, we're going to have minus 8, and then we'll add to that now 21 and 14, and that will be equal to, and we can leave this like so, we could just leave it as 7 lots of P, Q, or we could write 7P and 7Q. So let's have a look at this now. What do we get? We get 33. And then we get now on here, we're going to have 6. So we've got now in column form 33, 6, and that's 7 lots of P and Q. So we can now write that the following, we can write 1 seventh, and then 33, and then 6 will be equal to P, Q. So this is in column form. I'd actually go ahead and write it now as 33 over 7i plus 6 over 7j meters per second. So this now is the velocity of B after the collision. So you could write it as 33 over 7. Let's look at another way that this could be written. We could have now 33 over 7 and then 6 over 7 and that would be meters per second and we could write it like so. This is one way that you could do it. Um, alternatively, though, I think this is better notation. So let's have this just here so we can say now that the speed of B is going to give us this. I would prefer to write it like so. So we need to state the assumption. We've put now that A and B are modelled as particles. So are modelled so modelled as particles. And that will give you one mark in an exam. Modelled, uh, modelled as particles. So there we go, nice and straightforward. All we've done this time is use now unit vectors in i and j directions. So there's another typical exam style question. Let's look at one more. We're told Anil is playing with his toy tool set. He is hammering a peg into a hole in a horizontal bench. The peg has a mass of 0.05 kilograms and the hammer a mass of 0.15 kilograms. The hammer hits the peg directly with a speed of 0.6 meters per second and does not rebound so that the hammer and the peg move as one body. In part A, we are asked to show that the common speed of the peg and hammer immediately after the impact is 0.45 meters per second. 
And in part B, we're asked to find the impulse exerted by the hammer on the peg. Let's model this up. Now, with this one, I prefer to show it now as two parts and then one part. So what we have before, so this is going to be my before shot, and then we're going to have now an after shot. You certainly don't have to. You can use this, uh, the, these uh, spheres again if you want. I think it just looks slightly better if we do it this way around. So what we're going to have then is before. So we're going to have a hammer. Now the hammer has got a mass of 0 0.15. So if we put 0 0.15 and then the peg is 0 0.05, we're going to have a combined mass of 0 0.2. So let's go ahead and put some values on. So if we put now our arrows, and we'll put our arrows, we'll have now the first one. So let's put that there. That'll be just here. And then this one is going to be like so. So we've got now this scenario. And then afterwards, we're going to have now this common speed as they're moving off essentially as one object. So let's do that. And we can show like so. So what we've got then here, we've got now the speed of the hammer. And we're told that that's 0 0.6 meters per second. So we know that the peg is going to be at rest, so that's going to be 0, point, uh, sorry, 0 meters per second, 0, 0 meters per second, or just 0 meters per second. And then we'll have a common speed of V meters per second. So what we're going to state then is the conservation of linear momentum. So conservation of linear momentum. We know that the total momentum prior to the collision will be the same as that afterwards. So we've got mass times by velocity. So we've got a mass of 0 0.15 multiplied now by a velocity of 0 0.6. And we add to that now a mass of 0 0.05 and multiply by that uh, by the velocity, which is 0. And that must be equal now to the total momentum afterwards. Momentum is just mass times by velocity. So we've got now a mass of 0 0.2 and a velocity of v. So what's that going to give us? That's going to give us now on here, we're going to have 0, 0.0, uh, what's that, 0 0.09, isn't it? 0 0.09 plus 0 will be equal to 0 0.2v. So if we multiply both sides by 5, we can say now that, I'll write this here, 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.2 will be equal to v. And that's just the same now, if you like, as multiplying by 5. So we can save it to 0 0.45 meters per second is going to give us v and that's shown so all we've done is employ the conservation of linear momentum we now need to find the impulse exerted by the hammer on the peg we could of course use this what i'm going to do is just sketch this up and, and show what we've got so here's our peg okay and we've got a before and an after shot of the peg so I've combined this to treat it essentially as one system here. But if we consider now the impulse, and I'll put the impulse on and I'll just spin it around here, this is going to be the impulse. Impulse is the change in momentum, or if you like, I is equal to M, V minus U. So let's see what we've got here. Let's put these on. We know that we've got this initial velocity. Let's just spin that around. The initial velocity is going to be zero. So we've got one just here, and then afterwards, we're considering now just the peg at this stage. So what I'll do, I'll tell the examiner now if I'm looking at the peg. So this is a peg. So we can write this just here. So this now is a peg. So we've got 0 0.05. So 0 0.05. We've got 0 0.05. We've got 0 meters per second or 0, 0.0 meters per second, if you believe what I said earlier. And then we've got this common now velocity of 0 0.45 meters per second. We know the impulse from our previous work is the change in momentum, or we can say the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we've got the impulse, and that's going to give us now 0 0.05. So we've got 0 0.05. I've got now this final velocity, which is going to be 0 0.45. So let's put this on, 0 0.45. And then we're going to have this now, and that's going to be minus the initial velocity, which is going to be 0. So what's that going to give us? If I multiply those two, let's have a look at that. Um, 0 0.05 multiplied by 0 0.45, uh, 0 point, let's write this in, 0 0.0225, let's 0 0.0225. That looks uh, pretty good, and that's going to be Newton seconds. So that gives us the impulse right there. So all I've done is multiply those. 5 times by 45 is 225, and then we need 4 after the decimal. So that's perfectly fine. So all I've done is considered now the impulse, and we're looking now at the impulse exerted by the hammer on the peg. We'll have the same magnitude as the peg on the hammer. So you could have solved for the hammer. You're just looking at the absolute value of that. 
So I've looked at it in this way, looked at the change in momentum for the peg and the peg only, and we've come up now with 0 0.0225 Newton seconds. So a couple of basic exam style questions looking at the conservation of linear momentum and momentum and impulse in general.